Hi, it's Maria from Still Dreaming Homestead. I'm really happy because it is time for the Bible story. So we've been reading a lot about Abraham and Sarah and Lot, their nephew, and we're going to continue to read about it. We're on story eight of, the, of this section, Fire Falls from Heaven. It was about this time that God told Abraham what he had planned to do with Sodom and Gomorrah. Year after year, these two cities had become more and more wicked until at last God decided that both must be destroyed. They were so bad they were a danger to all the people around. Lot should have taken his children away from this evil, but he hadn't done so. He did not leave. His wife liked to living in Sodom, and his daughters married worldly young men who had grown up in the city. He was in a hard place. As the day of destruction drew near, the Lord said, Should I hide from Adam this thing I'm going to do? No, he answered. I shall tell him, for I know him. And he will command his children and his household after him so he could trust Abraham. What a wonderful thing for God to say about a man. I know him. God felt he could trust Abraham, not only today, but tomorrow and always. He knew Abraham was not only trying to save, to live right himself, but he also counted on him to bring up his children in the way of God's commandments. So God felt free to let him know the secret of the coming punishment of Sodom and Gomorrah. When Abraham heard the news, his first thought was for his nephew Lot. He loved him and he wanted to save him. He said to the Lord, you won't surely destroy all the righteous or the people that are following you with the wicked, will you? Maybe there are 50 in the city. If there are, surely you won't destroy them with the rest, will you? And God was pleased that Abraham was moved with compassion for the people of Sodom and who might not deserve to be punished. And he said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sake. And Abraham thought for a moment, hmm, there might not really be 50. What about if there was 40, Lord? Would you save him for 40? And the Lord said, yes, for 40, I would not destroy it. Abraham said, what if there was 30? What if we could find 30 people following you there? He said, I, God said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And then Abraham lowered the number, this time to 20. And God agreed not to destroy Sodom if 20 good people were there. How about 10? And God said, I would not destroy it for the 10's sake. 10 righteous people could save Sodom, but there were not 10 there. So very wicked that city had become. A little while after this, two angels, who looked like men, arrived in Sodom. They went straight to Lot's house to warn him of what was about to happen. They were barely inside, however, when a crowd of evil-minded men gathered outside the door and started a riot. They had seen two strangers enter and they were determined to attack them. Lot went out to plead with them, but they turned on him too. Only the quick action of these angels saved him because they made those people all go blind so they couldn't see Lot to attack him. Dragging Lot indoors, the angels told him about their mission and what was going to happen to Sodom in the morning. It was hard for Lot to realize that this was Sodom's last night 
that he and his children and all that he owned would be burned up unless he acted quickly. The angels urged him to think quickly. Do you have anybody else here? They said, son-in-law, your sons, your daughters, whoever you have in this city, get them out of here because we're going to destroy the place because the cry from the city is full of wickedness before the Lord and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. At last, Lot was convinced that something terrible was really going to happen. And he went out and he spoke to his sons-in-laws, the ones that married his daughters, and said, Get up, get out of this place, for the Lord's going to destroy the city. The young men, though, they didn't pay any attention. They thought maybe Lot's drunk, or maybe he's out of his mind. And they did not believe him. There was no sign of anything terrible coming up. And who was this God anyhow that would burn up the place? That was ridiculous. No one would burn Sodom. Lot himself began to doubt. As morning dawned and fire was about to fall from heaven, he still wanted to stay in the city. And while he lingered, those angels grabbed a hold of his hand and his wife's hand and his two daughters. And God, being so merciful, he led them out of the city. They brought them out. He said, escape for your lives, they said, and don't look behind you and don't stay in this place. Escape to the mountains. Otherwise, you will be consumed. That means destroyed. No doubt the angels warned the little group not to look back because of the blinding flash of light and the powerful shock waves that would occur as the fire from heaven entered the city. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plains and everyone that lived in the cities and that grew upon the ground. Far up on the mountain, Abraham, he could see the awful glow in the sky and he knew what had happened. And he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and towards all the lands of the plains and all he could see was smoke from that country the smoke of a furnace. Perhaps he wondered whether anybody could have been saved from this fiery inferno. There must be, he thought. There must have been fewer than 10 righteous people or this would have never happened. He could not tell, but the answer was three. Only Lot and his two daughters. Because Lot's wife, she loved Sodom so much and she disobeyed the angels who told her not to look back and she had been instantly killed and she became a pillar of salt. That means like a statue of salt, the Bible says. Now these three frightened souls, Lot and his two daughters, are hurrying for dear life up the mountainside through dense and stinky smoke, the only people left alive in that once beautiful country. Everybody else had been killed. Everything that they'd owned and loved had been destroyed. The cities, the trees, the green pasture land. Here's a picture of what they think Lot's wife might have looked like when she turned to look back and here are Lot and his two daughters trying to get away. Everything that he had once had seemed so good to Lot and had led him to selfishly choose it for himself, nothing of that was left. Only a big burnt area. 
Even today, thousands of years later, the whole area is a wilderness, and the site of Sodom is covered by the Dead Sea. So Lot, who once tried to grab for the best, found himself at last with nothing. He lost his home, his wife, many of his children and grandchildren, his barns, his animals, all but his two daughters, whom the angels had led away to safety. And he dwelt or lived in a cave, he and his two daughters. And that's the last we hear of Lot. What a sad end of a journey that began so happily and hopefully in Ur of the Chaldeans. What a lesson it has for us today. It is never good to be selfish and to choose the best just for us. And it's very dangerous to play with evil and to pitch one's tent or to live near a sinful area. So I think we learned a lot. And so a lot is that we won't hear any more about him, but I'm sure we're going to hear more about Abraham. So we'll read that, not tomorrow, but the next day we'll read the next story. I want to say I love you. I really do. But more importantly, God loves you, and he always will. All right. Good night, and God bless you.